25 years of 48 hours. We love the forensic side, the intimate details of the investigation, but what makes a story compelling is really when people are willing to tell their story. A guy that I had been involved with he murdered someone and he cut up the body. Willing to tell their version of the events. The cops decided that they should charge me with the mutilation. When they open up to the intimate details of their life. I love Colton Pontiac. We would spend days together at a time. We'd just stay in the house all day. Yeah. <laughs> I was shocked when people would be like, oh my god, you're that Laura Hall. People thought that I was some kind of monster. Oh, you're that Laura Hall. I didn't do it. And that's the bottom line. There is never a story that I walk away from that has not had some sort of impact on me. And there are times when I come back to the hotel late at night and we've had a day full of interviews and, uh, and, and I cry because it's hard. Some of these stories, the loss is so tragic. A mother and her two sons had been strangled in their sleep. And the crime is so horrific. Manson style spray paintings on the wall. There was a lot of fear that there was somebody else killing families. And who was gonna be next? We lived in a beautiful house. These people look like your next door neighbor. It was always very abusive. I mean, it was very aggressive. There is always someone who watches one of our stories who is either in a similar position or knows someone in their family. No, good bitch, I don't love you anymore. I hate you. I've wasted my life with you. Why can't you just die? Many times it's women who are being uh, controlled or in abusive situations. And I heard his footsteps coming toward me. He grabbed me. Bob liked to grab and squeeze. And the fascination comes in when they hit that fork in the road, and suddenly I feel the handle of the hatchet. I picked it up, and I swung it. The people on our show have made different choices than the vast majority of the rest of us would make. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop hitting him. I was terrified out of my mind. I didn't know if it was one time, two times, three times. It was 16 times with the hatchet. Then, with a knife, she stabbed him 21 more times in the back. That is rage. It was not rage. It was terror. I was terrified. I was terrified at this point for me. Women have come up to me and said, that was my daughter, that was my sister, that was my life. And I watched that show and I, I had been in denial for a while and then I realized that could be me if I don't do something about this. On occasion, we can impact a story and a case in a positive way. That's the reason to keep doing it. It was a cold case. The murder was 17 years old. The murder happened here in the middle of the night. Someone jumped out of the bushes and stabbed 18-year-old Trisha Picaccio to death. We spent several years trying to convince the Picaccio family to speak with us on camera, and it took a long time to gain their trust. I was alive, I found her. I woke up and I had a cup of coffee and I was going out to my van. And I just happened to see two little tennis shoes sticking up by the side door. And when I saw it was her, I dropped the coffee cup. It's heartbreaking when uh, the victim's family members open up about their lives and the life that was lost. <laughs> Right then and there. We ran the show, and within one hour, we had a witness that came forward that emailed me, and uh, we took them, put them in touch with the authorities, and within six weeks, there was a, finally an indictment against Michael Gargiulo in a murder that was 17 years old. That is extremely gratifying. The viewers would be surprised that um, I swear like a sailor. I really don't wear leather unless I'm on 48 hours and I'm working. Um, and I'm a deeply, deeply spiritual person. And that plays a huge role in my life as a journalist and as a mother and as a wife.